Oh, God. <laughs> oh, sorry. What is up, my Fear the Walking Dead peeps? Welcome back to the Z-Man Show as we are talking Season 5, Episode 6, called The Little Prince. And I'm sorry, uh, that probably, that facial expression, whatever you want to call it, is probably should explain this entire episode in a nutshell. I mean, let's just, if I've learned one thing about Fear the Walking Dead this season, five is basically just throw all practicality out the door, out the window, just don't even bother. There's no there's no point of it. Pretty much just anything that can and will happen, we're going to throw into this show. We're just going to get it done. You know, I understand that we've had so many episodes of Fear the Walking Dead and, and The Walking Dead right now. So, I mean, they're getting really hard up probably for these cool instances or ideas or situations where we should be excited. But, God... Bless America, guys. I mean, they're trying to build a friggin' plane, you know? I mean, I, I just don't understand. I don't even know how I'm going to get through this episode, but I suppose I'm just going to wing it. <laughs> I mean, that's, that, as bad as that joke was, that's how bad this episode was. I mean, I'm just like, I mean, it's not an awful episode. It was an entertaining episode, right? But, I mean, we're just going to get into the things, things that I liked and the things that most annoyed me. And here we go. This is rock and roll. So, the things that were awesome. Let's talk Dwight and John. I think that their, their arc and where they're going and their story is pretty interesting. I, I like Dwight as a character overall. So, him trying to find Sherry, it's where he was trying, you know, basically where he was at in The Walking Dead. Probably where he should have stayed, too. I guess they got too much storyline there. They needed to kind of branch him off. So they kind of throw him over here to kind of add, to, you know, to kind of help and add to the storyline. Not that it really helps that much, but all the same, he's on the journey. And John's skills, uh, previous skills, I guess, from being a police officer, is helping him along with his journey. And I think that's really cool. And it's cool to see John kind of find these clues and finding things that I guess Dwight would have probably overlooked and missed. And it's really kind of getting him to closure with Sherry and. They find that note and do that kind of rubbing technique and find that she basically had to get off the main roads. A storm was coming in. She had to stick to the country roads. And then they find this house, right, with the vehicle. They match the VIN numbers. Everything's kind of coming together. And then while Dwight's inside trying to search for her and hoping that she's probably in there, John comes across this final kind of letter from Sherry to Dwight. Basically telling him to stop looking for her. It's too dangerous. She knows that it's probably just going to get him killed in the end and she doesn't want that. She wants him to live. She wants him to be happy. But, you know, part of me is like, but yeah, but Sherry, but you are his everything. I mean, he won't stop for anything but to find you. This is his purpose in life. So the heartbreaking piece of this story is just, and now it's just right in front of our faces, and John has the information. And, of course, once uh, uh, Dwight gets out there, John holds back, and he does not tell him. And can you blame him? I mean, this would have ruined Dwight, completely ruined. I mean, he probably just would have ran off and continue searching anyways but it's not good and this is going to definitely come back to bite john in the ass so anyways cool piece i give points for basically uh john and dwight's story as well as sherry's letter because it kind of ramps things up and starts putting dwight on a different path as well or at least the potential for it so kudos to them for that annie's story i thought was very interesting as well so annie of course the older sister to the two brothers i think it was dylan and Max, I think it is. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Um, but, you know, and Annie was really starting to annoy me and just, just we're not understanding her backstory. And finally, we get the backstory. And I got to admit, it was a decent backstory. I mean, I really, I sat there and I was just listening to her and I was watching the acting and, and it was fairly legit, I thought, uh, and her story in general about basically how the walkers, I mean, um, basically, I guess a couple of people were not careful. The walkers made it back to their compound, that campment that they were at. Uh, we're finally breaking through the gates. The parents told the kids to leave, except that the walkers that came in were those damn radioactive walkers, which pretty much infected all of the grown-ups as well. So by the time Annie came back, she had to talk to her parents through like a shielded door pretty much and they told her you cannot see us you can't be around us hopefully we'll get better of course they didn't they died and how that was a pretty tragic story i mean even though they fended off all the walkers and they did what they needed to do they still died in the end so radiation's a bitch that's all there is to say about that and i felt bad for annie and you know what i really truly do get her passion now and why she doesn't want to follow luciana morgan and all the others and uh, alicia to the promised land or whatever because it's like Number one, she already watched these assholes fall out of the sky once, and now they threw a damn propeller blade, and when she found out that they were kind of working together with the scientist lady from the power plant, it's just, it's, just, it's, it's all strikes against our crew, right? And so Annie doesn't trust it, and you know what? I don't blame her. I don't blame her one bit. I mean, these guys are trying to construct a damn airplane. I mean, it's like seven or eight adults and a handful of kids. Worst idea ever, okay? So there's just that. Um, again, so I know I sound a little bit more annoyed than this, but I, I, again, I understand Annie's story. That's what I like. 
the other parts, we'll get to that in the annoyance piece in just a few moments. So the reactor meltdown I want to talk about. So we, so we get back in touch with Grace here, and it finds out that the second reactor is about to melt down and could pretty much kill everybody in the area. She needs their generator, I guess, to keep the cooling system kind of going. I'm going to almost call this a mistake in general, too, because I'm like, is that even enough to keep a, a generator, or excuse, is a small little generator, you know, going to keep something like a cooling system active? Maybe it could. I can't really say. I'm not I'm not all into it. Well, after doing all those Chernobyl reviews and so forth, I probably should be an expert in this, but I'm not. So either way, I thought that at least now that the, the meltdowns put us on a timetable and it has to force our characters out of the area probably within the next episode or two, that's a good thing. Okay, thumbs up. Let's get the hell out of this area. It was interesting but it's time to get going and so uh and grace trying to basically give her last uh hurrah is basically to try and save what people in the area by buying them some extra time so that they can escape so okay good for grace um i i'm not so sure that she is actually dying and neither is morgan obviously but we have to kind of go with it because she has probably been exposed to quite a bit out there in her travels killing all those radioactive zombies so, now let's go to the most annoying things, and I'm going to try and rifle through these as fast as I can because you guys already saw it, but let's just get them out there. They're building a damn airplane. They've got a bunch of pieces back, a huge plane shell, they had some engines and propellers and so forth, and they're constructing this thing. Again, a handful of grown-ups, a handful of kids are trying to build a freaking airplane. Throw the practicality out the window, like I said earlier in the episode. I mean, it's just like we're just gonna we're just gonna do this, and we're gonna get it done. I'm sorry, I cannot suspend my disbelief for something like this. Nobody has any kind of expertise. And Althea, mind you, she's up there. She's being an electrician now in, inside the airplane. You know, she's talking to June. I hope these uh, all these wires aren't fried. How in the hell would you know? I mean. <laughs> It just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. I mean, she's literally the catch-all character. She, hey, anything we we don't know how to do, we'll just have Althea do it because it just it just makes sense, right? Uh, so <laughs> I digress for a moment. So yeah, I was just put I put a note here. If I had a hundred extremely smart people, not necessarily mechanics or avionics experts or something like that, but we could not build that airplane. We couldn't do it. Oh, we can try and mess around this and that. It could take us a year. It could take us years. And in the end, we probably ruin parts. Where would we find the extra parts? It, Right? Okay, so this is a big one. I give like 10 strikes for this. Ding, 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 ding. You know, I'm just all strikes. Um, so, and especially with Althea. The annoying as well. Uh, I wish that thrown propeller blade would have nailed somebody. At least it would have put things in perspective. Like, wow, we are messing around with stuff we don't have any business messing around with. I mean, although desperate, and I get it, it's like they're, they're saying it's their only way out because they can't drive out because they'll get radiation sickness and uh, and there's no other pretty much way to hop out of this area. It's just, I, I'd rather take my chances on foot or in a vehicle. I swear to you, I would. I absolutely would. Uh, another concept tonight that was just getting in our faces and I was just like, oh, stop with it. Finding the way. They must have said a, a variation of those three words and so many whatever. 10, 15 times, we lost count. I wish I could go back and rewatch this just to count how many times I actually said it. I, I kept picturing Ian Malcolm standing in the background from Jurassic Park, you know, uh, and just being like, life finds a way, everyone will find the way. I'm just like, God, this is so bad. It's so stupid. The writers, you want to talk about lazy. I'm like, who, 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 who'd you hire to take this on? And I know who they hired, but I just expected so much more from them. Um, so life finds a way, and apparently these guys will too. Uh, Luciana, I have to give a strike for her. Her character is next to worthless right now. Although I know injured in this and that, and I know she can't heal up overnight, but, well, hell, they're building planes overnight. Why can't she heal up overnight, too? It might as well. I mean, she's pretty much doing nothing else except giving these little small words of encouragement every so often, which is just draining. I mean, I thought Morgan was draining. Luciana's character is draining me. I just, I just, I don't care. I, I wish I did. I used to, kind of, maybe a little bit. Uh, but now that, when, since Nick's been gone and everything else, she's just is lost as a character. That actress must be so frustrated with the writers in the show. I can only imagine. I have a feeling pretty soon she's going to be like, either give me something to do or just kill my ass off, please. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, the hot air balloon. So after all, hey, after almost all is lost and this and that, Strand and Charlie are flying in a gosh GD air balloon. All right over, we got the propeller nice and strapped to it because remember our crew um, that are in the radiation zone, they have the engines, they just need the propellers. So they bring one, which I'm like, well, what happens if they throw another one? Then now you guys are really screwed, because mind you, there's no more fuel left in this hot air balloon, and their descents start coming, they start coming down 
pretty fast. It looks like one of those oh shit moments. Like, uh, we're in deep stuff right here. And no, they crash, and all we see is the, the little buggy area just kind of tipped over that they were sitting in or whatever. And Strand and Charlie are doing fine. Mind you, there's about 30 or 40 walkers coming out of the surround now about to attack them. And they could be have the radiation blood sickness and this and that, whatever. I was just like, wow, this, this is miraculous. These people, I mean, you want to talk about plot armor. It's just amazing in this show. It's just ridi it's ridiculous. I'm sorry. That should be the name of my show, The Ridiculousness Show, because that's pretty much what I've been talking about nonstop one of these last four or five episodes. Um, surprisingly enough, though, Morgan did not annoy me as much as I thought he would because he's kind of been on that streak a little bit, just like, I got to help everybody he can do this and that. But I felt Morgan tonight was just kind of kind of refining himself in some ways because you saw him kind of messing around with that new aluminum pole he had and he just couldn't get the weight, the rhythm down and then he got the, the mop stick and he kind of turned that to make sure and he used it and he killed the walker pretty good but again that wasn't enough and then finally when he's in that last scene with Grace he's talking about his, his stick and how he was trained with this and the, and she's like yes and now it's a piece of wood that could do a lot of harm to you and he looked at it and he finally understands and he, maybe it's kind of like him putting a bit of his past away but Oh, I, I just feel that Morgan's kind of arc and his story is pretty much up. I don't know where else they can really take Morgan. And that's a shame, too. Lenny James is a very talented actor, but he's being wasted on this show, and I don't think he was probably the right one to port over. But all the same, this is where we are. I expect a Morgan death not far into the future if they can't work something else out with him. And there's been kind of like a struggle between who's the leader? Is it Alicia? Is it Morgan? Who should be focusing on? Whose story is this? It should be Alicia's. This was all about the Clarks and... I, unfortunately, I forgot their last names, but, um, you know, the, the husband and, uh, you know, Cliff Curtis, his, uh, that character. I'm sorry, I just, it's, there's so much going on in the story, I just, I've forgotten some of it. But, point being, this was their story about a middle class family struggling to survive in the apocalypse, and they pretty much killed them all off, and now it's just Alicia. So, they better keep Alicia alive, that's all I have to say. Um, so, yeah, I mean, overall, I, I've been giving this these episodes, you know, mediocre scores, you know, seven, seven fives. I finally just said, no, I'm, I'm done with my generosity. This episode got a six for me, guys. I just, the building of an airplane just kind of, it just kind of threw me over the edge. I'm just, I don't know. I, I would really love to know, please, what annoyed you the most tonight on this episode? Because there were several things. I listed like six or seven. So, and you can rewind back and go back through them if you want. But I'd like to know which one you thought was the most annoying. I have a feeling you're going to be with me on the airplane. But, hey, I could be wrong. It could be a certain character or something else. With that said, I hope to have more content to you guys soon. I apologize. We've been very busy around the house. We're getting new carpet and furniture, and it's just a big pain, and you know what? So I'm trying to get through all that, and we should be done in the next week or two. So I hope to have some other stuff out to you very soon. I just got some new gear in that I'm going to be using to film some future episodes for our Dead Nightmare series. Get out there and check that out. You can find me at www.deadnightmare.com. Okay, all our stuff's out there. Or you can check on the channel. Like and subscribe. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. At least it knows I need to switch some things up. But either way, this is our content for tonight this is fear of the walking dead again episode six wow what a doozy 6.0 score this is the zmam show and i will see you guys at the next review What is up, my... <laughs> I can't do it.